Okay, so there's going to be several things I'm going to talk about today. Specifically, one of the most important things I want to talk about is the solar panels and the electric company. Uh, well, I'll get to it in a minute. I tell you, the weather around here is is crazy. You know, they say April showers bring May flowers. No, April gully washers bring hot temperatures. <laughs> no, I don't know. We were 80 degrees two days ago. And today, it's so cold, I can just barely stand it. And I think we're supposed to get down to freezing tonight. So, it's just crazy. So, as you know, we had a major thunderstorm come through here uh, two days ago. Yeah, I guess it was two days ago. And it dirtied the well. We got two inches of rain, like, in, you know, 30 minutes. It was, it was an absolute gully washer. I'll link a video, the last video I made about it, at the end of this video. To show you it, it washed the driveway down 100 feet that way it, it's it's crazy how much rain we got so i said in that video that no matter what i do to this well mother nature beats me to it i mean we've had some serious rains since i've dug that ditch over there to keep the water out of the well you know the rain off, runoff water out of this well area but we got overwhelmed it just it flooded us again it was too much rain so i started looking this up i've looked it up a, a couple months ago but i looked it up again to really try to understand it and what i found was is one in five wells in the united states three, i think it's like three thousand wells 2500 3000 different articles said different things said that one in five wells are contaminated with pfacs or something like that it's that stuff that non-sticking surfaces they use for pans skillets so that's contaminating the wells well i looked up berkey berkey is our water filtration system and it removes that stuff so our berkey filters are about four years old now i think they're four years old and i haven't had to replace them which is the longest i've ever held on to a berkey filter every filter berkey fil set of filters i've had didn't last very long the very first set my wife took which doesn't count but the second set they just built up with calcium and i know what i did wrong i wasn't maintaining them the way i should have and then we started traveling as nomads and i maintained them perfectly then but they'd only last about a year and we were putting some of the nastiest water you can imagine in them so they would wear out pretty quickly but here we have this old dirty well antique it doesn't work very well and I've kept the filters going for four years, the Berkey filters. But the well does get dirty, and so I will flush it out. But it made me feel a lot better when I found out that the well, all wells, get dirty, especially when you have these kind of rains. I mean, I don't know what I could have done to avoid this. So as long as I'm not getting the Berkey filters clogged up so it can remove the PF... ACs or whatever their ASs or whatever they're called out of the water because I'm sure this well's contaminated I mean as many times it has been flooded and it was abandoned for 60 years and I'm, I'm just sure of it most water I guess surface water is contaminated so I want to keep the Berkey running well to remove that kind of stuff not to remove dirt and mud so I try to keep this thing running pretty well but I'm not having any luck. I say I'm not having any luck. I improve significantly every time I make an attempt at something. So, like I said, this, this last rain was the worst that I've seen since we've been here. Mother Nature just keeps ramping it up for us to see what we can endure. <laughs> so, what I'm going to do now, I know what happened. Was I have my ditch over here. It keeps the water from running over in this direction. And so it's supposed to run downhill. But there was so much rain that some of the water started running down this little slope here. It's just a little bitty slope. And I've tried to block it off a little bit with a brick and different things. And it just nothing seems to work. So, I mean, that brick may have actually hurt me more than I thought. But what I'm going to do is just get a couple sandbags. I'm going to run it from the plateau of this ditch here all the way across to here and that will put us right up underneath the overhang so water 
will fall down here and then hopefully on the opposite side of the sandbags and that sandbag will have it run off downhill this direction now the only thing is is that I don't know how many stacks of sandbags I'm gonna need but I'm gonna just use one stack of sandbags and see if that helps this shouldn't have been a lot of water but there would have been some water coming down this direction and then that will all run off downhill because what I noticed when I came out here was this area right here was holding some water and so when we look at the concrete pad that water can seep up underneath the concrete pad right here and you can see the water has a, a level you can see the water was up on it just a little bit right here so we'll see if we can keep the water out of this area right here and then now the thing that does happen is when the wind's blowing the wind will blow water into this dip right here as it is I'm not sure what I can do to avoid that somebody's gonna tell me to build a wall here but if I build a wall then I won't be able to get into it there's supposed to be an open thing but again that was just a lot of water I'm not too certain we're gonna get too many more rains like that that was that was incredible and the thing is is it it happened twice that night it happened about eight o'clock and then it happened again at midnight so it was just a massive amount of water and it didn't stick around now here's the water after it's in the filter and I don't know how well you're going to see that but it there's a greenish tint to it so it went through these house filters and it still is allowing some dirt to get through so I can't just filter it out is what I'm trying to say okay so let's talk about solar panels for a minute I got a question last night about solar panels and it's not a question I've answered in a long time so I had to look it up to remind myself on the different solar panels he asked is there a difference between off-grid solar panels and solar panels that people buy well not horribly a little bit and it depends on what you buy you can buy what they use you know for the companies to come out and install and hook it up to the grid and all that you can buy those usually what I think is is when you buy them from a company they give you 24 volt or 48 volt solar panels but you, like I said you can buy those you can buy them off Amazon and then there's the difference between these are 12 volt and then there's two different types of solar panels there's an older style solar panel which are cheaper and a newer style solar panel which now the prices are basically the same as a matter of fact I looked them up the older style was ten dollars more than these <clears throat> so the older style is called polycrystalline I'm probably saying it wrong what it is is when they assemble the silicon or silica I think it's called silicon the polycrystal is more a bunch of pieces just a bunch of little fragments and they kind of glue them together I'm probably saying this wrong but it's just it's a lot of pieces put together whereas molycrystalline so poly multiple molycrystalline monocrystalline that's what it is monocrystalline is one piece so there, there used to be a little bit more expensive so I looked up rich solar because that's what I have rich solar and rich solar is monocrystalline I thought these were polycrystalline but they're not they're unless they've changed which means I have two different kinds here I have monocrystalline on the new two panels up here and polycrystalline here but I'm not sure about that they look pretty similar as far as what the actual solar panels look like when you look at the polycrystalline you can actually see the fragments put together I don't see that here so regardless it doesn't matter it's it's one one piece the difference between the two is the polycrystalline are not as efficient in hot weather monocrystalline is more efficient what they say is is the heat I've talked to you about heat the hotter the solar panel is the less efficient it is it loses voltage so 
you can see my tarp that last storm ripped that tarp up the reason I have that tarp up there is for two reasons one if it's a windy rain it can push that rain up underneath the trim and get it wet so that was supposed to deflect that the, the primary reason I put that there is because it's white and it reflected the sunlight so my solar panel equipment didn't get too hot in there I don't know if it really helped I thought it did but I'm not sure it did so I might just take it off and leave it off yeah and see what happens in a rain a windy rain but back to the story of solar panels so as temperature rises with the heat you lose efficiency you lose voltage not amps voltage so these should produce if I'm not mistaken 18 volts but you'll start to see it to drop off significantly when it gets up 90 100 degrees well if these are mono crystal line solar panels then we're still losing voltage and it even says that you'll still lose voltage just not as much as polycrystalline so that's the, the differences, but really there's no big difference. I mean, you can buy the same exact stuff that they sell on in these companies. Then the other question about solar panels was, does the utility company pay you to have solar panels? And that took me a minute to understand what he was trying to ask. No, I don't get paid. <laughs> Nobody pays me anything. But in Florida, if you get solar panels in Florida, I don't think you can live off grid in Florida, but you can have solar panels. So what you have to do is you actually have to call what's called grid tie. Now, years ago, I tried to figure out how to do this and it was very expensive. The electric company had to come out and install this device and it was $10,000 is what they wanted to charge me to install this device. And they had to install it for their safety. What it does is if the electric goes down, it prevents the linemen from getting electrocuted by my solar panels. So it keeps electric from going out into the, the grid. However, if the grid is up and running, no power outages, if you are producing more electric than what you're using, instead of having batteries, because I have batteries, all my extra electric that I'm making from solar panels goes into the batteries and charges the batteries up. If you're grid tied, it sends that extra electricity to the grid. So you have a meter outside your house somewhere that spins telling you how much electric you're using. But if you're using less electric than what you're producing, you'll spin that meter backwards. At least that's my understanding. That's what I was told by the electric company 20 years ago is it will spin the, the meter backwards. So you're not really getting paid for the electric because at nighttime, you're not gonna be making any electric. So you're back to the regular spin of using electric. What it will do is it'll reduce your cost. Now, only way this could possibly work that you would actually get money back from the electric company, which I don't know if they'll actually pay you a check is if somehow you shut off your electric to your house, maybe you went on vacation or something, shut off the fridge and the freezer and everything, and you could get that thing to spin backwards all month, you might get paid that way, I don't know. But you do save money because you're spinning that meter backwards. But I don't get paid because I'm not even hooked up to the grid. There's no connection between me and the grid. All my electric that I make either goes to the house or stores up in the battery so I can use it at night. So that, that, that I hold all my electric. Now I do make more electric than what I need for the batteries. On a bright sunny day, I can charge the batteries up in a few hours, two, three hours at most. So the rest of the day, I just have solar panels sitting here not doing anything except getting hot. But on cloudy days, the reason you have so many solar panels is because on cloudy days, you want to make electricity, a lot of electricity to store up into your batteries. So since you're not making as much electricity because you're cloudy, you need more solar panels to, to get the batteries charged up. However, on sunny days, I do all the extra stuff that we want to do, run the air conditioner in the summertime or run the well, pump, 
I do that all on sunny days so I can use as much electric that I'm as making as possible. So if you'll click this up next box, it'll take you to a video where I was talking about the well. So I hope I can inspire you to work through your problems when you live in your dreams. Thanks for watching.